official weather station for the California State Fair. And now, this is News 10 at 11. It's the traditional American dream, buying your own home. But a new report says for Californians, that's becoming an impossible dream. With the price range and the, uh, what we're looking for, it's not, we're not finding it here, Tracy. It's our top story tonight. I'm Dana Howard. And I'm Alicia Malaby. Dale and Christina have the night off. The dream of home ownership is slowly slipping away. New figures show only 27% of Californians can afford a median-priced home. That number is down from 32% last year and half of the national mark of 55%. News 10's Cornell Bernard is live in Tracy with more. Cornell? Alicia, Tracy remains one of the hottest real estate markets in Northern California, a real mecca for Bay Area commuters, and now much less affordable for those folks who would like to live here. It feels everywhere, um, cows everywhere. Tiffany Miller remembers when her hometown of Tracy was nothing more than pure country living. Today, the country's been replaced by congestion. But Tiffany doesn't mind. Both my fiance and I have family here in Tracy, and I grew up here, born here, so I would prefer to live here. But buying a home here could be out of reach for Tiffany. Her budget is falling short of a local median-priced home, now about $290,000. Ruling out Tracy, it's too expensive for us, but we're, you know, young and first-time home buyers. So. Tiffany's not alone. Fewer Californians are now not able to afford a median-priced home in places where they'd like to buy. Tracy Realtors see it every day. They priced out. That's why they head east, where they can get more affordable there. It's from 70 to uh, 50,000 less than they can buy in Tracy for the same product. It's looking more like Modesto, Ripon, um, mm. Florida. The good news, hot housing markets like Tracy could be cooling down. In the past two months, there have been fewer sales, making more homes available. But for now, Tiffany will continue her search and hope someday to make her home here in Tracy. Hopefully we'll find something else in the next few months. And of course, many hope that a uh, stronger economy and lower interest rates could put home ownership in reach for more people. But maybe not here in Tracy for a while, though. Uh, subdivision not far from here. Average price of a home is about $400,000. So, Alicia, back to you now. It is tough everywhere. How yep. disappointing. All right, thanks, Cornell. Here is a look at how the rest of our area stacks up when it comes to being able to buy a medium-priced home. Now, remember, the national number is 55%. It drops to 43% in Sacramento, 40% in Stanislaus County. The number drops to 37% in Merced County, 30% in San Joaquin County, and only 16% in Sonoma County. These numbers all are lower than they were last June. Another blow to the local job market, CalFed announced today it would lay off 700 people, more than half of their local employees. But that's within the next year coming up, and the layoffs are due to the CalFed's upcoming merger with Citibank. This follows big cuts across Sacramento at Providian, Worldcom, Hewlett Packard, and Apple. An Alton woman is clinging to life tonight after fire ripped through her home. Flames broke out just after 6 o'clock this evening, and even hours later, firefighters were still putting out the hot spots. Firefighters say the victim is an elderly woman who is very well known in the community. She was living in the same home where her mother once lived. Firefighters from as far away as Dixon helped knock out the blaze. As you can see, we had a tin roof. It stayed inside the building. We had a very tough time. We had no wind. It was just like a foggy day down here. And we had guys very, very tired, a lot of heat exhaustion. But we made a good stop on it. One dog managed to escape the fire, but another, a shepherd mix, was trapped inside and died. Firefighters say the home apparently did not have a smoke alarm. Damage is estimated at about $120,000. A hot and potentially dangerous weekend is off to a fiery start. A wildfire broke out this afternoon in Pope Valley on the northwest corner of Lake Berryessa. More than 170 firefighters are battling the blaze, which has grown to 700 acres. Several buildings were threatened, but no homes or wineries were endangered. The fire is 50% contained and was started by sparks from a gas-powered lawnmower. 
And as we said, it will be a very hot summer weekend here. J.D. Marr joins us now with a look at our first weather. J.D.? Well, uh, we can officially call it uh, upcoming heat wave. Meteorologically speaking, we look at any time we see an extended period of time, like three days of 100 plus degree temperature, well, my forecast is going to be five plus days with 100 degree weather. Let's go outside right now. It is a nice night. If you like 80 degree weather, pretty picture there at Rayleigh Field here in Sacramento. Temperature right now, 79 degrees, a very light south wind. Winds for the most part have been out of the north northwest and they will continue. We have seen the red flag warnings dropped as well. Temperatures throughout the area right now, take a look. You'd think it was uh, mid afternoon. And you're watching midday, but you're not. You're watching News 10 and 11. 81 degrees at Executive Airport. Winds out of the west, very light, north-northwest in Stockton to 9. And the humidity is very, very low. So once again, it's going to be a smoggy heat wave. It's a spare the air weekend, something very, very rare. And brutal heat and more weather coming up. So stay with us. All right. Thanks, J.D. Following up on one of our top stories from earlier this week, the arrest of a 77-year-old janitor charged with making a sexual advance toward two young girls. The janitor appeared in court today to face the charges. He's accused of ordering two girls, ages 9 and 11, $10 each if they would let him touch their bodies. The janitor strongly denies the charges. He's a father, a grandfather, is devastated by this. He can't sleep, he can't eat. You know, it's very easy to make these kinds of charges. The man actually touched uh, one of the, the girls on the arm and proceeded to try to lure them into a room. She leads a life of daisies and roses. She doesn't sit here and think up stories like this. She the accusations cost the janitor his job at Country Day School, where the incident allegedly happened. He worked at the school for 18 years, and he does not have a criminal record. The man accused of kidnapping and raping five-year-old Samantha Runyon says he did not do it. Alejandro Avila pleaded not guilty during his arraignment today in Santa Ana. Since prosecutors have said they will not accept a plea bargain in this case, Avila's plea sets the stage for a trial. If he's found guilty, he could face the death penalty. No decision yet in the trial of David Westerfield. The jury hearing the case went home today without reaching a verdict. They'll be back on Monday. Westerfield is accused of kidnapping and killing seven-year-old Danielle Van Dam. He, too, could face the death penalty if he is convicted. Governor Gray Davis tonight is defending California's Amber Alert system. The governor met with representatives from two dozen television and radio stations today in Los Angeles. Some complain the system took too long to be activated in the case of two teenage girls kidnapped from Lancaster. Davis admitted the system needed some fine-tuning, but promised it would be working smoothly within three months. Meanwhile, Florida has come up with a new way to boost the odds of finding abducted children. They want to print Amber Alerts on lottery tickets. That would allow information on an abduction to be handed out to hundreds of thousands of people each day. No progress to report today on the state's budget stalemate. The new spending plan is now 40 days overdue. However, Democrats have proposed that almost is doubling the excise tax on all alcohol sold across the state. The tax hasn't been raised in more than a decade. However, Republicans seem unimpressed. They say the state should focus on cutting spending rather than raising taxes. The proposed alcohol tax increase will be heard next week. California's budget troubles could also mean road troubles. Right now, several areas are being targeted for traffic relief over the next 20 years. Dozens of projects are already underway, but the group spearheading the plan says if state funds decline and projects are delayed more than a year, impending Central Valley air quality issues may stop them completely. If we don't get a new clean air plan in this region by 2005, we could lose access to all federal funds for large transportation projects. And that could be one or two or three years where we couldn't build any large projects. The Department of Transportation also receives gas tax revenues for road projects, but the state borrows that money in times of budget trouble. Road projects that depend on that money are delayed until the state pays it back. Well, it's not unusual to leave work to run an errand, but it is if you're a surgeon in the middle of an operation. We'll have more on this bizarre story coming up. Plus... From my cold, dead hands. One of Hollywood's greats appears to have a debilitating disease. We'll have the latest on Charlton Heston coming up on News 10.
you know a great student or teacher? Nominate them on News 10 for Student Scholar of the Week and Teacher of the Month. I'm News 10's Christina Mendonca. We all have a vision for what we would like to accomplish, whether it be in our professional or our personal lives. Getting there can be a challenge. You need words of wisdom and support. That's why at this year's A Woman's Day, you'll find that inspiration through vision, voice, and strength. Enjoy exhibits, workshops, and inspirational stories from these accomplished women. Enhance your skills. Join News 10 for the Sacramento Bee's A Woman's Day, Tuesday, September 24th. The U.S. Customs Commissioner says few crimes are as despicable and repugnant. Agents say they've broken up an internet child porn ring that involved dozens of children and their parents. Operation Hamlet stretched from Europe to the U.S. Officials say 45 children were victims and 80% of the victims were either molested or abused by their own parents. 20 people have been indicted so far. The West Nile virus has claimed two more lives in Louisiana. Two elderly women are the latest victims of the mosquito-borne disease that brings the death toll now to seven. At least 85 people in Louisiana have contracted the disease. And tonight in Mississippi, residents are being warned to take precautions against mosquitoes after a death there is believed to be from the West Nile virus. The disease has also been detected in Missouri and Kansas. A surprising announcement today from actor Charlton Heston. He says he has a neurological disorder consistent with Alzheimer's disease. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. Heston has appeared in more than 100 films, including the Ten Commandments, in which he played Moses. Today, in a taped speech, Heston says he wanted to talk to his friends and fans before it was too late. If you see a little less spring in my step, if your name fails to leap to my lips, you'll know why. And if I tell you a funny story for the second time, please, laugh anyway. The 78-year-old actor went on to say he will work when he can and rest when he must. Heston plans to finish his run as president of the National Rifle Association. His term ends in April. Well, it became one of the hottest cars to hit America's roads and set off a trend of new retro-style cars. Now, Daimler Chrysler is recalling 464,000 PT cruisers. The recall was issued after the discovery of a possible fuel pump leak. A spokesperson says the leak could start a fire if sparked. 25% of the cars being recalled have another problem as well, a fuel supply line that rubs against an air conditioning service port. Officials say this could also start a fuel leak. Daimler Chrysler will notify all PT Cruiser owners by mail. More good news tonight for the twin girls recovering from separation surgery. Maria de Jesus and Maria Teresa are now being fed intravenously. Both girls are still in critical condition, but doctors say their vital signs are stable and they're continuing to improve. The sisters who are sedated are responding to the touch of nurses. The Guatemalan twins were born attached at the top of their skulls. They were separated after a 22-hour operation earlier this week. In Massachusetts, a hospital suspends a surgeon after he walked out on a patient in the middle of an operation. Dr. David Arndt was six hours into a spinal surgery when he left with the patient's back still cut open. Officials say Arndt was gone for 35 minutes. He reportedly told the nurse he had bills due and had to deposit his check before the bank closed. Arndt later apologized, saying he exercised extremely poor judgment. A heat wave hits Northern California. J.D. Marr will have details coming up. Yep, you were right. You know your car. And hot summer nights must mean hot August nights. We'll take you to Reno for a taste of this weekend's big classic car show. But first, we'll get you ready for the California State Fair and let you know about this year's hot new dessert. That's next on News 10. Ready to mark your calendar with these upcoming community events. Don't miss the Classical Fanfare Concert featuring violinist Stephanie Chase to benefit the Sacramento Symphony League's Music in the Schools program. Enjoy great food and wines at Rancho Cordova's annual Wine and Food Festival. Munch with the Wild Bunch, have breakfast with the Beasts at the Sacramento Zoo, and head to Calaveras Big Tree State Park for the annual Family Day. Send your community announcements to News 10 Connects. The 2002 California State Fair starts next week, and tonight, the State Fair Gala formally kicked off the festivities by honoring the people who make it all possible. 
News 10's Alyssa Lynn is the official meteorologist of the State Fair. Alyssa, along with Christina Mendoza and Del Shornak, hosted the event. And while you're at the fair, be sure to stop by the News 10 booth in Building A, where you can try your hand at being a News 10 weathercaster. And as well, you can try the fair's newest dessert, fried Twinkies. Now, who comes up with these things? Fried Twinkies? I don't know. It doesn't sound so bad. I mean, they already have enough fat in them. A little bit more is not going to hurt. I guess it wouldn't. And I don't know if you'd want something fried or perhaps hot with this weather. Maybe a cool popsicle would be better. That is in order. Didn't the anchors look nice? They did. They Alyssa never smashing. wears that when she does the weather on the chroma Christina key. Christina doesn't. Dale looked the same, though, didn't you think? Well, guys usually do. Yeah. <laughs> That's they true. both always <laughs> look wonderful. They look great. But what we can count on is hot weather. And officially, I'm going to proclaim a heat wave. Anything over three days typically, but could be five or six days. Again, we take a look at the West Coast to see what's been happening. High pressure, that's the big H, that's sinking air, and it compresses and it is solid. Even San Francisco today saw temperatures in the 80s. They're going to get a slight break in the city by the bay by Saturday into Sunday. But we're going to continue to see what we call an offshore flow of air. The winds have subsided, and that's why the National Weather Service has dropped most of the red flag warnings for the Tahoe National Forest and the El Dorado National Forest, but they still remain for the extreme sections of Northern California. So there you go. It's going to be nice and toasty this weekend. Well, this is something that you don't see every day. You ever been on vacation with the kids and seen a little dust devil? Well, this is very interesting. It's kind of like a tornado, but it just comes up from the ground. That's dust. And this was amazing, spectacular dust devil. It lasted about two minutes. It reached heights of 500 feet. The dust devil was comprised of heat, and dust, and wind, and it occurred in a burned area south of Julian. That is incredible. Pretty pictures tonight. Here's a pretty picture of our own Broadway and the Tower Theater there. Looking good. It's pretty hot outside, too. Temperatures are very, very warm. Look how hot we got today, 105. Now, as we continue this heat wave, we could meet or exceed 1996 temperatures. 103 in Stockton, Modesto, 101. 102 in Fairfield, even. Lake Tahoe, 82. And morning low temperatures will remain in the low 60s. Right now, look at this. We're still in the 70s. 79 up in Marysville. Fairfield is 79 also. And SFO, San Francisco International Airport, right now is 74 degrees. Elsewhere, right here at our studios, it is 79. It's a little balmy outside. Humidities are still low. Roseville, 78 degrees. Stockton is at 81. And Modesto, finally, 79 tonight. That's right, 79, just about 80. Hot and dry, low humidities for the fire forecast. Red flags have been dropped, except for Lassen and Plumas counties and extreme northern sections of Mendocino County. And we'll see humidities only between 7 and 12 percent. Winds out of the northeast to the northwest. The big story over the weekend will be the very poor air quality. Pretty rare we see a spare the air weekend, but that's what we're calling for. AQI index of 174, and look, that is unhealthy for sensitive groups. 150 down through the San Joaquin Valley. This is just subtropical air, but look, it's just moving out away from us. That's because we still have that strong area of high pressure. Nothing is really going to get through to keep us cool. A little cooling around the Bay Area. So smoggy heat wave for the next five to six days. No kidding around. It's going to be very, very toasty. There's the sinking air, and it will be absolutely brutal heat. Temperatures between 101 and 105 degrees. And first, take a look at the News 10 Tower. It's red hot and it's going to remain that way for a long time let's go to san francisco here's your forecast and we'll get to about 89 tomorrow by sunday they'll get to about the 70s fairfield vacaville low 100s 93 for napa looks like they have containment too on that fire northwest of lake barrier so, so that's even better news especially if you're traveling up there 105 tomorrow Folsom 100 degrees Low 100s for the San Joaquin Valley, and you'll notice the haze, smays, and smog all weekend. Placerville, 95, 97 in Jackson after a morning low of 68 degrees. Sunny, Quincy, 95, northwest winds to about 10 miles per hour, and 97 and hot in Nevada City. Up there for hot August nights in what we call the Truckee Meadows, 96, so that's hot enough for them. 55 in the morning in Lake Tahoe, there's another cool spot, 85 degrees. Ouch, 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 106 
maybe 104, we drop as the Bay Area cools, if you want to call it that. 107, 110, 105, and a cooling trend for the State Fair to come out and see us at our uh, beautiful, beautiful booth and exhibit out there. And that's always a lot of fun, too, to get to show people what you do, because it's it kind of tricky, all that pointing, that's and you've got to do the right hand, right direction. That's right, they get right to see the blue wall, they get a free picture, and it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of freebies at the fair, it's my favorite part. Oh, good. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. All right, very good. It may have been hot outside this evening, but that didn't keep some runners from raising money for a very good cause. The Run for the Arts was held tonight at Cal Expo. This is a look at the children's race. Participants either ran or walked the course. They gave them a behind-the-scenes look at the California State Fairgrounds. News 10's Darla Givens emceed the benefit run, and she got a chance to interview the winner of the race, the kids' race, seven-year-old Nick. <laughs> okay. Well, she did interview him, and she asked him what his secret to running was, and he apparently started running at a very young age. He said he tried his hardest. Proceeds from tonight's race will benefit the arts in Northern California, and participants also got a free T-shirt and a free ticket to the California State Fair. <laughs> Keep on running. Well, the Raiders travel to Big D for some preseason football. Dana Jacobson will have highlights, plus... Here's the 2-1. Swing it on one. Barry Bonds joins one of baseball's most exclusive clubs. We'll have the highlights coming up next. Visit smartpages.com, your online yellow pages, and more. From the cold, clean waters of Alaska comes the Alaskan Seafood Fest at Long John Silver's. Plenty of fresh new taste to choose from, like our new Gold Rush platter, piled high with fish, crab cakes, and much more. There's fresh baked salmon in our baked Alaskan salmon platter, cool, crisp avalanche seafood salad, plus our famous batter-dipped whitefish combo, only $2.99. It's all served fast and fresh, but hurry, the fest is for a limited time. Head north to Long John Silver's. The Alaskan Seafood Fest is on. Right now at the Bedroom Superstore, pay zero down and zero interest for 18 months. Buy the hottest styles at our hottest savings. Country, 277. Contemporary, 377. Rustic, 477. Oak, 577. Slay, 377. Kids' beds, air beds, Simmons Beautyrest mattresses, and over 50 bedroom suites. All at our guaranteed lowest prices. With zero down and zero interest for a full 18 months. Now at the Bedroom Superstore. You're never far away from weekend weather with News 10. With News 10 seven-day forecast, your weekend is always in the forecast, no matter what day it is. Get your weather from News 10. If you've been hurt in an auto accident, call 1-800-4-INJURY. Our attorneys fight hard to get you the money you deserve for your injuries. When an accident happens, call 1-800-4-INJURY. Help is on the way. 1-800-4-INJURY. Did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven. <laughs> Are those astronaut pants? Because your butt is out of this world. All right, look, that's it. Somebody call the cops, because this girl just stole my heart. Hey, honey. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, hey. Here's the dentine I said you wanted. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> honey, Mark. <laughs> to me. Thanks. If you were hurt in a car wreck, stand up for your rights. Call 1-800-4-INJURY. Our attorneys and staff can help you get the compensation you deserve. Call 1-800-4-INJURY. Help is on the way. 1-800-4-INJURY. A lot of people asking tonight, did you see it? Did you see it? There was a loud scream in the newsroom, <laughs> and I knew something had happened. That's I didn't how, know what. That's but. how you can always tell. Just listen for the screams coming from the Edit Bay Area. Barry Bonds, now the fourth member of the 600 Home Run Club, and while the wait from 599 to 600 probably felt like a lifetime, Bonds' last 100 home runs came faster than any of his predecessors. You see, it took Willie Mays four years to go from 500 to 600 home runs, Hank Aaron three, and Babe Ruth two. Bonds, you probably remember, hit 500 just last year. Giants hosting his old club, the Pirates. Bottom of the six, Bonds facing Kip Wells. Swing it on one. This one is way back. It is out of here. 600. That is
this right, home run number 600 for Barry Bonds, a 421-foot shot to center. He joins Hank Aaron, Babe Ruth, and Willie Mays as the only members of the 600 home run club. As for the fan who got the ball, he paid a price for it, a bloody face, but it's an historic one. Bonds, the second fastest to ever reach that 600 mark. It's been 31 years since the last Major League player entered the 600 home run club, Hank Aaron, in April 1971. I didn't expect to get to 500. You know, you know, you don't think of those things as a major league player because some of those feats seem too far fetched to even come close to. Um, you know, basically, you just try to stay healthy and and play long enough to enjoy your career and to be here where I am now is um, a, a really nice accomplishment. And certainly more to come. There is one piece of bad news tonight, though. The Giants lost the game 4-3. to three. AL side now, A's at the Yankees, and a game that simply wouldn't end. Bottom of the eighth, the A's were up 2-1. to one. Bernie Williams is going to knock in the time run with this hit. But Enrique Wilson tries coming home to be the game winner. He's out at the plate. They're deadlocked at two forever. I mean forever, because this went into 16 innings. Top of the inning, one on. Mark Ellis, the former River Cat, a loop to center. A's are going to win 3-2 to two in 16 innings. Yes, the Oakland Raiders got shafted in the team's snowball playoff loss to the New England Patriots last year. But as the saying goes, that was then, this is now. Raiders kicking off the preseason against the Cowboys. New head coach Bill Callahan, not exactly as expressive as John Gruden, so we're going to head right to the highlights. Not even close, is he? Not too many Raiders highlights. Uh, second quarter tied at three. Quincy Carter and Mike Lucky hooking up. 10-3, to three, Cowboys lead it. Make it 17-3, Cowboys, before the Raiders will get on the board again. A Seabass field goal, 39 yards, and that's all the Raiders get. Good thing it's preseason because Cowboys beat them 20 to 6 the final. From slam dunk to the Jellos jiggling, Chick Hearn, the voice of the Lakers, has left an indelible mark on the NBA. Today, the Hall of Fame broadcaster memorialized by all of his family. Fans at the Staples Center got one last look at Hearn's home away from home, one last chance to remember the only voice the L.A. Lakers have ever known. At a private funeral service, his relatives and Lakers kin also said goodbye to the 85-year-old legend, remembering Hearn for his legacy of 3,338 consecutive games called. The ultimate professional who loved his team and his listeners. Lasting. To the Kings now, the latest report on Mike Bibby says he'll be signing just a one-year deal with the club and become a free agent again next year so he can do this all over again. His teammate Mateen Cleaves also making news undergoing successful treatment on his feet to treat plantar fasciitis. And second-round pick Corsley Edwards was signed by the club today. The 6'9 power forward averaged 14 points and nearly 9 rebounds while at Central Connecticut State. And for more sports information, including links to all those scores we couldn't get in, click onto the sports page at our website. You'll find that at news10.net. Rivercats win big tonight, and on Monday, first 6,000 fans get the Eric Burns bobblehead doll. It doesn't look a lot like him, but it says his name on the back, so I trust that it is Eric Burns. He's <laughs> playing with the A's right now, but spent three seasons with the Cats. Too. I still can't get over 16 innings. Was anybody left to watch? Yeah, there were several fans left to watch. A couple people very happy when they got their uh, pop-up fly balls there. So, I guess you know. so. All right, Dana, thank you. Yep. Well, coming up next, the festival that always lives up to its billing, Hot August Nights. Get ready to start your engines. We're going to take you to Reno and show you what all the noise is about. News 10 is still coming up. Stick around. Scratches. Scratches? Uh oh. Better get Mako. Mako repairs the damage and restores the value with everything a body needs, plus paint for every budget. Like ambassador service for $249. And Mako also works wonders with strikes. Women blame it on hormones, diet, or stress. Men on their age, their dads. But while men and women deal with hereditary hair loss differently, something works for both. Rogaine. In fact, nothing's been proven to regrow hair better. And the sooner you start, the better your chance of success. So start early. For men. For women. Rogaine works. The sooner, the better. Imagine getting the perfect breakfast for just $2.99. Hi, welcome to Kara's. I like eggs, bacon, and pancakes. That's $2.99, sir. How about eggs, sausage, and a waffle? <laughs> it's still $2.99. What about bacon, eggs, and fruit? Just $2.99. How about... It's $2.99, sir. All kinds.
dozens of combinations, one low price. The $2.99 weekday power breakfast, now served every day. This is heaven. No, sir, this is Carol's. <laughs>